Hi there and welcome back to another NJS instructional video. In this video I'm going to cover shackles, steel shackles, soft shackles, bow shackles, D shackles and explain to you what the differences are and what their load ratings mean. Now steel shackles especially have been around for a very long time and have proven themselves over the years to be very reliable in lifting and rigging applications. Up until the last decade or two they have also been a popular choice for off-road recovery situations, for example winching, snatching and so forth. Now soft shackles have also been around for some time and they've been used primarily for marine applications like sailing. However, in more recent times, they have also become very popular in four-wheel drive off-road recovery situations. So let's dive deeper into these shackles and look at their design, features, benefits and also their drawbacks. Let's start with steel shackles. Steel shackles that are sold here in Australia and are used for lifting applications must be compliant to AS2741. For example, they must be marked with a working load limit value or WLL and that's the maximum allowable load that can be applied to the shackle. The grade of material, commonly either an M or an S, the supplier or manufacturer ID, so it can be cross-referenced to a test certificate. Other requirements set out in the standard include the shackle body forging specifications, the dimensional specifications, and ratios of material elements. Now if a shackle is missing any of this information, for example this shackle here, it's not compliant with Australian standards. Now here is an example of a shackle that does comply with Australian standards. Interestingly, this shackle here was purchased online and this shackle here from a reputable automotive store. Now a steel shackle compliant with AS2741 is certified for lifting and what this means is that due to the higher risk of lifting heavy loads in the air compared to towing a load across the ground, a higher safety factor is incorporated from an engineering design perspective. Now the safety factor is typically four or five times that of the working load limit. So in theory the shackle should be able to handle four or five times the load limit. For example, a 4.75 ton shackle like this should be able to handle up to nearly 20 tons of load. However, the safety factor also considers manufacturing and material defects, as well as the application in which the shackle is going to be used. Therefore, the working load limit value is the only value and rating that we should pay attention to. That's why proper and rated AS compliant steel shackles, when used correctly, are so strong and reliable. Now steel shackles come in a variety of sizes and types, and the most common are D shackles like this, and bow shackles like this. Now all these steel shackles here have a screw pin arrangement, which makes them really useful for non-permanent applications like vehicle recoveries. Now a bow shackle, is more versatile than a D shackle as it has a larger diameter making it easier to attach ropes and snatch straps too. Now another thing to consider with the steel shackle is depending on the angle of load the working load limit may have to be reduced. In a direct line load like this the working load limit remains at 100% however at a 45 degree line load the working load limit is reduced to 70% of its actual value and then at 90 degrees like this the working load limit is reduced to 50% of its working load limit. So that's a quick overview of steel shackles. Now moving on to soft shackles. These offer a safer and more flexible alternative to steel shackles. They're fairly easy to attach and they can accommodate a number of straps due to their large eye diameter. They're also very lightweight and that makes them much safer. So if a steel shackle fails, it can become a lethal projectile due to its weight, force and energy that it is subject to in a recovery situation. However, due to the low weight of a soft shackle, this risk is greatly reduced in the events of failure. Now soft shackles can also float on water, which is handy for recoveries in river crossings or mud holes. Additionally, soft shackles are a one-piece design as opposed to a steel shackle, which is a two-piece design. So there's less items to lose. Some of the drawbacks though of soft shackles are that they're not as tough as a steel shackle. They can damage and abrade very easily if not cared for. 
Their strength also degrades when exposed to UV and when they're wet. Also, they're not recommended for constant or continual operation as the fibers degrade with use. So you have to be careful when using these on recovery points with narrow or sharp edges as this also reduces their strength. However, the biggest drawback of a soft shackle is that it can't be used for lifting. Now you may be asking, why is this important? After all, in a recovery situation, you wouldn't be using a soft shackle in a lifting arrangement. Now, unlike a steel shackle, because a soft shackle isn't designed for lifting purposes, they're not subject to the same load ratings as a steel shackle. For example, you won't see a working load limit value on a soft shackle, only a breaking strain value. So essentially meaning that there is no safety factor or minimal safety factor built into the rating of the soft shackle. Therefore, if we applied a typical safety factor of four or five, suddenly a soft shackle rated to 10 tons is actually only rated to two or two and a half ton working load limit. Now I find this a little bit misleading as people often compare a soft shackle rating to a steel shackle rating, thinking they refer to the same load rating when in fact they don't. So let's look a bit deeper and consider a simplified stress strain curve for mild steel. On the vertical axis we have tensile stress and on the horizontal axis we have strain or elongation. The graph shows how the material, in this case C350 steel, responds to a tensile stress. Now in simple terms, tensile stress is the tensile force applied over a cross-sectional area and the strain or elongation is the change in length over the original length at that load. In this example, we have a yield stress of around 350 megapascals. This represents the yield point after which the material goes from an elastic region to a plastic region. That is to a point where it won't return to its original shape, but is permanently changed or deformed. The ultimate tensile stress of 450 megapascals is the maximum stress the material can handle after which failure is imminent. The breaking stress value is the stress at which failure occurs, which for most steels is typically lower than the ultimate tensile stress, but at a greater strain. The breaking strain value is simply the strain at the breaking stress value. That is the stretch of the material at failure. For other materials like ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or UMPI, which is a common material for soft shackles, the breaking stress value is the ultimate tensile stress value and the point at which failure occurs. Now, when a safety factor is considered in design, it is usually relative to the yield stress, not the ultimate tensile stress of the material, which is a far more conservative approach. In the case of our steel shackle, the working load limit is based upon the yield stress with a considerable safety factor included. Now this is just an example, but every material, be it high grade steel used in bow shackles or nylon or umpy, will have its own unique stress strain curve with distinct yield stress and ultimate tensile stress values. Now when a soft shackle is rated, it is typically based on the ultimate tensile or breaking stress with usually no or marginal safety factor of only 10 or maybe 20% overload considered. Therefore a soft shackle rated at 9 tons will fail shortly after 9 tons, maybe 10 or 11 tons, depending on the rigging setup. Whereas a steel shackle rated at 9 tons, ignoring the safety factors, may fail at 36 tons or more. So a very big difference indeed. So when comparing the load ratings of a soft shackle to a steel shackle, keep in mind that they are quite different. Ideally, soft shackles should be rated using the same criteria as a steel shackle. However, there currently is no Australian standard on soft shackle ratings. Hence why we have this discrepancy between the two. So when considering what shackle to buy, you really need to weigh up what your needs are and how you intend on using the shackle, and then choose the right shackle accordingly. I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell notification icon. Thanks for watching.